What is going on? Let's just get into today's uh, lesson, which will be drum roll. Turbulence. Turbulence, such a taboo subject. Yes, I say taboo because everybody knows you're going to experience it. Everybody knows it's going to happen when you're flying in a plane, but nobody talks about it because they're scared. Uh, a lot of people gear up before a flight, you know, have a couple of drinks and maybe have some pills. <laughs> you know, hit the drugs. <laughs> I don't know, whatever you guys do um, in order to prepare for the crazy, crazy turbulence um, that may you may encounter. Now, with that said, turbulence. All right, so turbulence, you know, we encounter turbulence as flight attendants all the time, okay? So it can be caused by different things, um, mainly, you know, air pockets and um, just the weather uh, in general and what's going on above the clouds. So even going through the clouds can kind of provoke a little bit of turbulence as you're sitting um, and landing, but most probably, you know, storms and, and bad weather, uh, a lot of rain, all that uh, can cause turbulence. So whatever causes turbulence, which is either atmospheric, is that how you say it? atmospheric? Atmospheric, <laughs> atmospheric or not, um, people have a fear, you guys. They fear flying. And their number one question to us, flight attendant, or to me would be like, you know, are we going to make it? Like, is this going to get bad? Are we going to have turbulence today? Uh, and if we do, like, what are we expecting? Is it, is this plane, is this bird going to land? And <laughs> so you guys, we have so many questions about turbulence and it's the number one fear. And it's not really taboo. As I said earlier, um, it's just, this is something that everybody knows, but nobody speaks of. Let's just put it that way. They know it. They don't speak it and they all act really brave because they walk in and a lot of like, you know, people that fly, they know that it's going to happen. Some of them, you you know, you could be shaking up and down. They're totally oblivious. They're either sleeping or others know what's going on and know that nothing's ever going to happen because they feel safer in a plane than they do in a car. So that's what I meant by taboo. But, um, and then there's others that just, you know, they can't hack it because it is, when you're in a plane, you're no, you are no longer in control, you guys. So you are basically not flying. You are not driving. You have, you're leaving your faith in someone else's hand. So the pilot is the one deciding, making decisions, and you have to linger. You have to just kind of lay there and sit there and just let everybody do the thinking for you. So if you're not used to letting go of your, um, what you call it of, of control okay so if you're not used to letting go of control um then you have to trust in someone else to do that for you so it can be very nerve-wracking to fly i know a lot of you um think oh my gosh I, I don't know how your flight attendant going through all the bumps and the turbulation it is very scary i'm not gonna lie sometimes the plane does do crazy things um i might even Leave a little clip right over. Let me move over so I can kind of show it right there. A little clip of a turbulence and you'll see all of the cards kind of moving up and down sideways. So that's why we always have to be sure that they are locked down. Um, so you're probably going to see my reaction there too. So I'm not seeing the video. I'm just kind of telling you what I think you may be seeing at the moment. <laughs> but um, it's pretty cool, you guys. Like at the, I'll be, okay, so I'm going to confess. I am going to be completely honest with you guys. I can't believe I'm about to say this, but... Before being a flight attendant, I was terrified, okay? Terrified of, and when I say terrified, that's actually being really nice. <laughs> I'm talking, I was one of the person that would be the most scared of any little like bump going on in the plane. Okay, so let me explain. I'm one of those that as you climb, there's a little, you know, there's a, a little bit of clouding and whatnot. So you kind of go through the closet and it moves a little bit. Well, that's shaking. Just that shaking, it would scare the hell out of me. And I'm one of those that would just grab my claws and go to the person next to me and just claw the hell out of them. And if I could rip off their clothes, I would. And that poor guy or lady, whoever it was, uh, I remember holding a lady's hand so hard that her fingers were completely purple. <laughs> and then I had a flight, I remember uh, going to... Whatever. Oh, I was going to Cuba because I'm Canadian. So I would say we were able to go to Cuba um, way back then. And we are now too. But um, I know Americans have a harder time to get in. Anyways, 
But I remember going to Cuba from Montreal, so it was a three hour flight. And I literally, literally that poor guy, I got so scared because of the turbulence as we we're landing. There was some air pockets. We even took a drop. Oh my gosh. I remember grabbing his shirt and putting my head into my arms and I rip, I literally ripped his entire t-shirt. <laughs> his buttons were missing. Oh my God. <coughs> oh my gosh, you guys. So, all right. That was a confession. Ah, and I'll tell you what started it all. When I first started flying, when I was young, I never really, you know, went through turbulence. So I didn't really know what it was. And I knew it was shaking a little bit and whatnot, but I didn't know that it can get terrible until one time I had to fly from Toronto to Montreal. It was during the winter time. I'll never forget. And the flight was Air Transat. Now I don't think Air Transat exists anymore. Or maybe it does. I don't remember. I don't know. I'm forgetting, but I took Air Transat. Plane took off. It was being de-iced before we took off because it was full of ice and the weather was horrible, you guys. We couldn't even see. There was like a blizzard, but they took off anyways. We took off. We hit 30,000 feet, 35,000 feet. And as we were flying, everything was fine. And it went from like fine, like me falling asleep, being drowsy, to literally like, you guys, we dropped. And I'm talking like elevator drop from like universal or I mean you're talking dropping and non-stop dropping to a point where my heart was and then the oxygen masks you know opening and the bins opening people screaming plane got side you know side I don't know what happened it got to the side and came back it was just out of control to a point where then it was a big boom sound holy crap okay so this is a girl here that travels never really thinks that anything is ever going to happen to me and I traveled a lot. Um, I love to travel. I love to, you know, go on vacation and whatnot. So when I was single at the time, um, I was doing a lot of Toronto flights and that flight, I'm telling you, just totally changed my percep my perception of flying. Cause ever since that day, um, it made me so skittish and so scared that every time I get on the plane, I always think that that's going to happen. Now it's something similar to if you've ever experienced a, um, uh, a car crash or I mean not a car crash but a car accident um, I was also in a car accident because of bad weather my car skid on the ice when I lived in Canada and I went into the HOV lane which was a bus only lane and that bus happened to be coming the opposite way because that was his lane and it was going against traffic so it can bring people to work faster so I ended up sliding and that bus came right to me and almost killed me. Um, took me six to seven months to recuperate. I was lucky to still be alive. That's a long story and that's a story, a separate story, but I still thank God for that. And I am here today. I think I just got a little scar from it and you can barely see it. Whoops. You can barely see it. And then um, I know that I broke my ribs and my, I mean, it was horrible. I couldn't walk. Um, all my ribs were all broken. It was just horrible. Horrible. I don't even know how I survived that from a huge bus that couldn't stop because he was on ice and he didn't want to jeopardize his 50 passengers. So he ended up hitting me and I had this little car at the time. It was my brand new car. I think it was like 18 or 19 years old. Oh, anyways, um, that goes to show that if something dramatic happens in your life, you guys, then you kind of bring that with you. And then you always think that's going to happen when that scenario presents itself. For example, when it snows, because we went up north and I'm hoping to maybe show a little picture or a quick little clip. Um, we actually saw snow and it's three hours away from here. Uh, the minute that it snows, obviously my brain kind of remembers the accident. And then I kind of get scared because I'm like, I remember what happened to me. Oh my goodness. <coughs> or when it rains. <coughs> so when it rains and it snows, when it's, um, and when, the, when you could tell that the, you know, your car can actually skid a little bit or move a little bit and be out of your control that's when i start panicking a little bit so um so that goes to show whatever it is that happens to you as a child or as you grow up um especially when it's negative you always can it always comes back to you and it triggers something from your past so now flying did that to me i was flying fine and then that big turbulence craziness and that went on for about 30 minutes enough for, to scare the crap out of me beep okay <laughs> And so I ended up um, being really scared of flying, but I still flew because it's kind of like riding a bike. If you fall or like riding a horse, if you fall, they say to get right back on just to kind of, um, you know, not fear that again. So I did that again, but it's never gone away. Um, it's never gone away. And 
I remember thinking, because I wanted to be a flight attendant, but I remember thinking, how the heck am I, am I going to do this if I'm scared? So um, it took a lot of um, unlearning. You know, it's kind of like the Pavlock. You know, you hear a ring and then the dog would salivate. Well, this was the same thing. Every time I would feel a little bump, I would think something bad would happen. So I kind of like taught myself to understand that, you know, if there's that and if there is a big turbulence, at least you felt it and you know what it is. I mean, to be in one of the worst turbulence ever, you know what it feels like. So you know that you survived it and you know you were fine. So I kept on kind of like positive reinforcement. Every time I would feel something, I would just kind of speak to myself and and um, and kind of comfort myself and psychologically work with my mind because you know it's all in your mind, you guys. Uh, I know that, you know, if the plane is shaking and whatnot, it's not in your mind, but at the same time, it's your reaction. It's what you do with this that is gonna kind of like follow. It's gonna make you uh, react a certain way. So. With that said, it took me, I want to say a good six months of flying to kind of get over my flying fear. And when I did, I was ready to apply and be a flight attendant. Now, um, I have gone through so much turbulence ever since I started working. Uh, we have like the craziest destination, you know. Um, we have like all these South American destination and they're very, very windy. Plus, you know, windy city. We got Chicago. We've got Vegas. Those are all like very flat area so when we land there's so much wind and it's coming like the opposite of when the plane let's say the plane is landing the wind is coming this way so the plane's kind of trying to and then i'm going to show you a short clip right here um of us flying through the storm and it was so bad that we could not even land that we had to take off back up in the air and uh, i have to command this puerto rican uh pilot he did an amazing job we were supposed to Coincidentally, he's Puerto Rican and we were kind of um, landing in Puerto Rico. But um, he had such a hard time landing to a point where they would not let any flights land at that point. People had to, basically most flights had to turn around and leave um, because it was too dangerous. So we were the last ones and we really got hit hard, you guys. The wind was nuts. Oh my gosh. Um, and I'm talking, like even though our, um, our trolleys, where our carts were like locked in, it was like they were shaking and bouncing to a point where I had to double look to make sure that they wouldn't break or anything. And I know they're very solid, but you always have to double check, you know, visually to make sure uh, you could not get up. I mean, we were basically strapped on that flight the entire time. We were bouncing up and down. It was really bad, but I was laughing through it. It's so funny because I'm talking to my, um, to my partner uh, in crime there that I was working with. He was hilarious. He was really nice. My crew was uh, wonderful. And we were just talking and we're going and we're bouncing and we're talking. People are like just looking back and they're like, well, if they're not stressed and I shouldn't be stressed because you guys, you're like a role model. They look for you, for you for like any kind, any sign of distress. So a lot of people, they they'll look at you, especially if you're sitting in the front and they're, they're all facing you. You have 200 passengers looking at you. You don't want to be going, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. Because the first time that you will do that, this is a time where everybody's going to panic because they know that you fly for a living. And if you show that you're calm about the whole situation, they will reflect how you feel. Um, but if you're like super nervous, then they're going to be like, oh, she's nervous and I need to get nervous. Now we're going to crash what's going on. And you're going to put a lot of doubts in people's mind that are traveling with you on that flight. So you need to make sure you guys that you stay calm, even though you may be a little nervous and it's normal to be nervous. Again, we don't know, you know, it's, we know that we're going to be safe. We just don't know how long the turbulence is going to last. And we know it's going to be a crazy, crazy ride, um, especially when the weather is bad. So we did anticipate bump. Uh, but we didn't anticipate this much of a bum. <coughs> but I remember being really proud of myself because after that flight, once we landed, I remember everybody clapped. So we finally made it. Um, but I had a friend of mine, a friend of mine. He's actually my husband's cousin. But we've gotten so close that um, I love him. I love him. I'm going to send him this video so he can see it. Um, he's very dear to my heart. Um, I don't know. I just, we just clicked ever since I met him. He lives in Puerto Rico. He knew I was landing and he works at the airport. So... Um, he lives by the airport and he was able to actually film the landing of our flight. And I remember getting a message saying, Hey, is, you know, I just was able to catch you upon arrival. And that flight was shaky. I could tell from the way that you guys landed. Now think about it. If somebody can visually see how the plane was shaking, could you imagine us being inside how it felt? 
And um, so I was able to take a little clip of that. And um, he sent me that video, sent it to my husband, sent it to everybody. <laughs> he was like, hey, that's Shelly's flight. She's in there. She's going through a, I feel like a little shaker, you know. <laughs> I was just missing a little margarita there, there, a martini with a little olive. Yeah. So when we got out of there, I was like, oh, okay. Um, and believe it or not, we only had a layover of what, like an hour? Because right after that, people were boarding and were ready to leave. And I remember thinking, oh my gosh, we were like the last one to land and now we're going to leave. I think it was landing that the issue was. I don't think like taking off I'm, I'm, or maybe within that hour, I think the weather got better. I don't remember the details because this was a little while ago. Uh, but I remember we took off and I remember thinking, great, we're going to have to go through that turbulence again. And we did a little bit, but not as much because I did tell the pilot. I said, you know what? Coming in, it was horrible. And he goes, yeah, I did hear about that. So uh, he goes, I'll look out for, you know, where it's patchy and I'll try to go around it. So they're really nice about making everybody feel comfortable. And I wanted, you know, the people that flew with me to feel as comfortable as I wanted them to be. So, they, you know, you go, you want everybody to have a good experience in the flight. So with that said... Some of you think, well, turbulence isn't so bad and, and, or, or it could be bad, but I think it's all in the movies and whatnot. So I am going to post a little clip and I don't know if I'm just going to post a clip here or I'm just going to make myself disappear so you could see and get really the feel. Um, this flight was, um, I don't remember the flight number. I had it, but my phone just fell as I was talking to you guys. That's when I went, oops. Um, it is a flight on Frontier Airline. And I believe it's from Denver to, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> I had it written down and I just dropped it. Uh, but anyway, so you guys take a look at it. I'll post where it's, you know, going to and from, or from and to. And then um, I want you to guys to experience that little clip. Uh, just pretend that you're inside and how you would react. And now you're going to hear a lot of people. Um, they're going to have their opinions and they're going to have their sounds, you know, of scared uh, scared sounds of screaming and whatnot. So take your time and then just that and just understand that as a flight attendant, this is what something you can, you can and will have to live through on a daily basis. Okay. I don't want to scare you, but I just want to keep it real. Cause if you hear flight attendants, I tell you it's a great job. If you're scared of flying, it's fine. It's safer, blah, blah, blah. That's all surface talk. You guys, what really happens inside of that metal tube it's not always rosy and peachy, okay, you guys? You deal with customers, you deal with turbulence, and it can be scary to some. Um, like I said, it's still scary to me at times, uh, but I've learned to understand what's going on and, and communicate how I feel, and um, I've gotten much better at it too. So if you're not there, work on yourself, you guys, before you do apply, because you don't want to be that flight attendant that is scared and scares the entire crew and the people that are on board as well. So watch this clip. And you guys, let me know what you think.
This year, Captain. Uh, unfortunately, we went through an area of uh, severe turbulence there. It was not forecast. We tried several altitudes to get out of it. We apologize for that. The uh, aircraft, everything is safe and fine. Um, I know that's probably disturbing to go through something like that, and I apologize for it. We're moving down to a safer altitude at this time. Um, we'll update you here shortly. Thank you. You don't update me, man. Put me on the ground. Don't forget to subscribe, Sky. Click the subscribe button. And, oh, if you need coaching, you guys, coaching, coaching. I know my new group of people that I've coached I actually started a training yesterday. Woo, woo, woo. And I've got some emails from them in Texas and whatnot saying that they were excited to start and they uh, wanted to thank me for helping them. So, again, thank you to those that send me beautiful messages. And, again, congratulations on your CJO. And if you guys are getting ready for training, um, again, I always say it on, on, in my most of my recent videos, Please uh, message me, reach out to me. I'm here to help you guys. I've been through it. I can coach you. I can help you with your resume. We want, you know, we want to choose the uh, crazy words. Not the guy. I say, I always say that. Um, we want to choose like special, special, meaningful words that will stand out from their database so that they can recognize you and, and pick you um, to get an interview. So you, um, you want to go through me? And definitely uh, trust in my services so that I can help you get your CJO. All right, with that said, take care, guys. See you and mm, love you all. Bye.